Welcome, welcome lovely people. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions Live on this very sunny um, Tuesday the, what's the date? Yeah, 28th of January 2020. I hope you're doing very well, hope you're wherever you are, hope, hope you're having a lovely time. And um, yes, yes, let us begin. Uh, yeah, before before I get started, um, I yes, uh, I I want to share where I'm going a little with you. Um, for a long time now, I've uh, realised what it, what I'm doing seems to be very different from um, what's generally considered to be yoga out there. Um, and I was, I've been thinking about it a lot because uh, I, I spend a large proportion of my my time trying to um, prove that the thing I'm sharing is yoga uh, by referring to particular principles and that sort of thing. But actually, um, I think the thing I'm sharing is is what yoga has brought me to. As in, um, I I have. Uh, totally immersed myself in, in the um, fundamental principles of non-violence of, uh, with the idea that um, uh, non-violence being one of the examples but it, with the idea that if, if, the, if your understanding of the thing that you're achieving uh, you're trying to achieve i.e. e.g. non-violence is correct then what it leads to is what we can recognise as yoga as in integration, simplicity, ease, that sort of thing. And um, so I've been applying myself to those principles and, and the outcome has been phenomenal, as in, um, you know, when, when non-violence arises, the body responds enormously and there, there is transformation, um, for example. And I could go on, I could go on about um, each of the each of the yamas and niyamas, I could go on about each of the eight limbs, you know, um, the refinement of understanding of what each of these things potentially means. Um, in my experience, as in uh, my, my experiment with the thing, is applying myself to it, to, to these ideas in, in practice, so principles in practice, and then when I stumble up, 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 upon the, ide the sort of version of the idea that actually works, I go, okay, that's what, I, that's what that thing means. That's what nonviolence actually means, actually involves. Um, so I use, I use the, the sort of proof, the, the solutions part, as a way of saying, okay, well, that's the yoga then. Um, Okay, so so yeah, I mean th this has been my process, but uh, what I what I've ended up doing in terms of um, in terms of what I share with people is how to guide attention uh, and um, taking people's attention into their direct relationship to how they engage with their environment, uh, enviro-somatic relationship, you know, and um, so it's occurred to me that the thing I'm actually sharing. Uh, when I teach, is sort of the outcome of my yoga. It's not actually yoga itself. Um, the, the principles are, are there, and, and, and actually they don't necessarily belong to yoga. There's nothing that says you can't be non-violent in your actions um, un unless you practice yoga. That's, that's, a, that's ridiculous. It's, it's, a, it's, it's being human. There, there are sensible ideas about being human. And um, it's just I've taken them to their fullest conclusion through the f framework of yoga. And uh, yes, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might start owning the fact that what I'm, what I'm sharing is entirely different. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a methodology, it's a six-part methodolo methodology of how to guide your attention so that you can have this direct universal experience of, of creating solutions for yourself, you know. 
of um, you know, and uh, which everyone recognises. That's the point. It's a universal recognition of a sort of state of integration or or whatever it is that we experience our yoga as. So um, yes, I'm thinking of. Uh, expanding a little bit uh, and, it, and it goes with my haptic intelligence courses my proprioceptive intelligence courses and that sort of thing um, it's I have my own methodology so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think I should put it out there as the aqua viva method so if anyone catches this and uh, has any comments on the idea um, if you're familiar with my work I'll, I'll be I'll be very grateful to get your feedback on whether that would be um, useful. And uh, I mean, the, the, the thinking behind it is that, uh, you know, I spent my, the last 20 years trying to convince the world that yoga is for everyone. And the biggest uh, block that I come across is people's idea of what yoga is. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a preconception. It's, it's built up based on what everyone else, exper what everyone experiences and thinks it is and all the rest of it. Um, but rather than limiting who this is for by, to those that have already decided that yoga is a thing that they want to do, and then sort of putting half of my energy into, ex uh, into explaining what I, why I think that my, my thing is yoga, maybe I just call it the Aqua, Aqua, the Aqua Viva method. Uh, and it's a, it's a methodology that can be applied to anything. So don't limit it to yoga. I, um, I have people who work with Tai Chi and Qigong, I, um, a massage therapist, uh, even nutritionists and, and psychotherapists. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a, an embodied approach to whatever you choose to do. And it invite, invites guiding people's attention in useful directions in a particular sequence. So uh, I think what I'm offering is the Aqua Viva method of how to approach all body work. Um, so, yeah, f uh, feedback would be very, very welcomed. Okay, uh, that being said, <laughs> I've, I've got a question from the lovely Barbara, who, who's done one of my courses up in um, Scotland. She came, she came from Ireland, travelled over, which is very nice. It was lovely working with you, Barbara. Um, and her question was, how about a good old-fashioned sun salute, um, which is a great idea. It's a nice and sunny day. Uh, it's about getting on with practice and how to basically apply, I, I guess that from her perspective, what she's asking is for me how to apply my principle-based approach to something uh, that is um, quite often done mechanically, uh, like sun salute. Um, you know, it's prescribed in what you do and how you do it, and then you repeat, rinse and repeat, <laughs> and you get resilient at doing it. Um, that's more exercise and less to do with what I consider to be yoga. But um, if I was to apply myself to my principles in approach, then let's see what would happen with that. So let's put myself on a, on a broader image. There we go. Um, that be enough for you to see me? Yeah, so I, I could have it a, a little higher up so I, I don't get cut off quite so much. So excuse the admin moment. There we go. That'll probably do. Yes. Okay, so sun salute. Um, I'll face this way despite the fact that the sun's back there. Um, so uh, sun salute, you know, most people think yoga is a series of things to do. Um, and you need to do something in order to practice yoga. Um, but but uh, what I believe yoga is, is an attentiveness to the quality of what you're doing. And, um, and my thing is about guiding your attention in particular directions. And the first one is, is um, how you make contact. So... Um, the, the, the movement is from uh, Samastisi or Tadasana to uh, Anuvitasana or, or um, standing backbend. So if I'm interested in how I touch the ground and how I move in space, I, I would like those things to relate to each other through the ease of the arrival and release of the breath. So 
I mean, we can mechanically lift our arms, and that's a very simple thing to do. But what, what you end up doing is basically you're just levering the weight of the arms up with muscles around the neck and shoulders. And it's, I don't think it's the point of lifting your arms. It's a sun salute. So we need to um, have the quality of salutation. So there'll be something wholehearted in it. And, and what I'm doing is I, I'm looking at my... I'm, I'm, I'm sensing my touch. I'm allowing the weight to be a little more forward so that I can let go of the ground. A little bit in the heels, but also in the middle of the body. So on the inside of the body, as I let the weight travel forwards, it's the spine that's actually traveling forwards, the base of the spine, um, and then followed by the rest of it as the wave begins. I'm, I'm trying to allow space away from the ground rather than just leaning back and being heavy on my spine. Yeah? Allowing, allowing space away from the ground, up through the middle. And then as I get up to my head and throat, I, I happen to know that, um, you know, I happen to feel a complication for myself around the bump of the base of the neck, and, and it's not unusual. Most people are, are quite stiff around the thora upper thoracic spine. So I'm pausing there with my hands um, underneath my chin like this. So I found a movement away from the ground, up through the middle, away from the heels, up through the middle, and then when I get to the throat, I'm interested in the space either side of me. So this is the second part of my, where my attention is taken, is how I engage with the space either side of me through breathing and the release of the breath. Now, if I release the breath away from what I'm doing, this widening in space feeling, then the ribs will drop away from where my wings are in space. And as they drop, I can touch the ground with the heels again. And the result will be a a release away from the ground as I give my weight to the ground. So wide, up through the middle, wide, inhale, release the breath. And there's this expression of saying hello to the sun. Okay. Um, next part is to, is a forward bend. So I would, rather than just lowering the weight of my arms, I would engage with that space above me and almost kind of pulling myself up by pulling down and that helps keep this upward moving space in the middle and still I'm light on the heels so they've got that option and if I want to fold at the hips the simplest way of doing it is from be, is by being on the fronts of the feet and then allowing myself to fold as I move back to the heels but then I also want to feel supported so I can use my hands to be supported forwards. Or I can touch with the heels, with the release of the breath, so that I get supported away from the ground in the core of the body. And it's a, it's a rhythmic dynamic. You know, I want to play with the weight forwards. I want to play with releasing forwards away from my legs as I support myself back. Um, so the breath is wide. And you can do that with your legs as well. From the purchase of the feet, you can widen into space through the hips. And then with the release of the breath, if I add the touch of the heels, there'll be a wave-like emptying away from the ground in the core of the body. So breath by breath. Um, just a, a little, little point in forward bend. If you have the intention to reach the ground, you will pull on your back. And when you pull on your back, um, the back sort of restricts movement to protect you. So this uh, sort of playful arrival where you're playing with the weight forwards and then touching with the heels gives you more of a way of getting close to the ground, which isn't the same as lowering your weight. And actually, if you want to, um, if you actually want to get deeper into a forward bend, don't stretch. What you do is you collect yourself together on the inside, away from the ground, on the inside, not on the surface. So if I'm hanging out here, uh, supporting myself with my feet and my hands, then little by little, as I release the breath, there's a feeling of away from the ground, up through my thighs. Breath, as I release the breath, there's a feeling of up from the ground, away from the ground, through my core. So I'm sort of gathering myself together on the inside of what I'm doing. 
uh, from my hands. There's a feeling of emptying the chest. As I release into my hands, I empty the chest away from my hands. So I come together in the ribs, I come together in the core. And little by little, as I gather together away from the earth and from the space all around me, it sort of brings the spine closer to the action without me stretching anything. The thighs coming up helps the sacrum come through the legs towards the feet so I don't have to stretch anything on the surface to get there. And the, the gathering around the heart, uh, the lungs and the ribs, underneath the wings, brings the upper spine closer to the body, closer to the chest, so that it can rest through your touch. Okay, so a um, uh, little detail there, and, uh, and I would, you know, if, I, if I'm doing a sun salute, I don't just mechanically go through it. I, I notice when there's something that needs attending to, and I spend a bit of time there. So back to the program. The weight goes forwards, I let go of the ground on the inside, I meet the space either side of me, I breathe, and then when I release the breath, I can meet the earth beneath with my heels and the heavens above with my attention. I bring the heavens down so that the middle of me still feels light. And then folding the hips by uh, moving from the front of the feet to the heels, but then using the feet to support myself as I travel. <sighs> Gathering myself together as I settle so that I can relax closer to my center. And the body will open up around that, breath by breath. And then I'm going to take the weight onto the one foot. So when, I, um, when I'm taking the weight onto, let's say, the left foot, um, it's not, what is it not? Yes, it, it, it is it's literally taking the weight. It's not lifting the weight of the right leg up. It's giving the weight to the left foot so that the down through the left foot allows the right foot to be light because the, whole, the weight of that limb is being given down to the standing foot. Um, there's a sort of gather to get that gather together feeling uh, is how you kind of open up from the centre rather than pull yourself apart. So from, from, the f from the ground up, from the space back through to my centre, I find my centre so that I can extend away from it. And then the touch will be light and it won't be too heavy. Okay? And uh, I like to come back into a sort of a, a triangle base with the front um, foot off. So I'm on the front heel and the back foot, back toes. Now the reason I like that is it gives me a, a sense of how to um, lean through my triangle base in a way that allows the, the base of the spine to rest through the body to the ground. Which is kind of a useful thing because when I decide to lower the front foot, can you see? Yes, when I decide to lower the front foot and allow the knee to bend and lower the back knee, the base of the spine travels with it, with the front knee, and it can just simply keep going. And again, I let go of the ground in the front heel a little and up through the middle, out to the side with the breath. And with the release of the breath, I can replant the heel to salute the sun above me. Okay, and then a um, simple case of just bringing that knee back to meet. And um, so we're going to go in towards dog pose. So I'm playing with how my hands can take my weight, as in my hands going down means I can relax the pelvis. Because the core of the body is supported away from the ground. And that's, that's a sort of down and back towards me feeling. And then how I can transfer the weight from the knees to the feet whilst 
leaning through my hands. So I, I make a simple transition of weight, breath by breath. Now, um, there's a little bit of, um, well, one of the instructions in, in, um, in, in yoga is to get the heels to the ground in dog pose. It's a bit of a red herring. It's just the intention, actually, to, to find support from the space behind you, as well as the touch of the feet on the ground. So pulling the knees back to straighten the legs and pushing the heels down does not give you support. It sort of distorts the joints and leaves you kind of stranded in some ways. But whilst you trust your hands, the hands opening a little to give you a, a sense of support back from the hands, um, the way we open the legs is by using our touch to grow, to widen into and then meet the space behind you. So that um, right now these thighs are totally soft, the kneecaps are not pulled up, but the legs are opening fine. And they, they open with the release of the breath a little more, because that sense of the heel away from you helps the core of the body empty away from the ground. So you end up with that dog pose feeling. Then the job is to work out how to continue to support yourself as you bend the knees. So you stay leaning through the hands, and if you feel yourself catching weight with the knees, it's because you're pushing your weight against your knees. So the same sense of sort of squatting towards the feet, but you'll find that the buttocks get a little more involved as you arrive on the ground. And then from uh, being on your hands, your head, your knees and your feet. We're going to move forwards towards something like cobra pose um, or face up dog or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this, with the hands on the ground and the elbows off the ground, you're sort of inviting a little bit of openness from the upper thoracic spine, which is very useful for any kind of back bending movement. So there's a sort of pressing down through the hands that assists that but also a dragging yourself towards the hands that also assists the lightness of the head with that extending response going on. But the thing that actually sends you forwards isn't the pull of the hands, it's, that's just there as part of your support. The thing that sends you forwards is the push of the feet. And when the feet push away from you, it will cause a flexion response. So if you do that with the release of the breath, the feet pushing away from you will send the tail forwards in a, in a flexed response. The hands pulling towards you means that once you're over the hands, you can sort of let go, once again, of the pelvis and legs and the effort in the legs and feet and drag yourself through a little. Okay? So, so it's not, we're not trying to get the pelvis to the ground. That's, and we're not trying to bend the back. We're not trying to be heavy in the pelvis. but. We're leaving the legs and pelvis behind as, and, and as we drag the core of the body through. So you should feel your belly open up as you do this and the upper spine open through your shoulders. Okay. Next part is to come up to dog pose. So um, rather than just lifting myself with this extension going on that would cause a pinching around the lower back, I would use my touch. So if I press down through my feet, then what happens is the core of the body um, is sent away from the ground. And that, that feeling of pulling of the hands still helps me sort of float up in space and roll over my toes into dog pose of sorts. And I'm going to bring a leg forwards. I can't remember which one it was originally. Uh, let's just, let's make it the right. I don't think it was, but um, so you can see. So what I'm going to do with this is rather than just attempt to pull this forwards. I'm going to start by being over my hands and the head and knee being close so that I find support in a flexed kind of fashion from my touch. And then with the release of the breath, I can thread those toes in space and that will happen from the thoracic spine again. 
So the, the extension happens from the upper back because I started from a, uh, by not lifting the weight of the leg with the back. With that going on, with that leg high and wide, um, I can, from that spacious position, I can sort of find my center again and move from there to bring the foot forwards. So it's not that sort of heavy, um, sort of desperate attempt to bring the foot forwards and nut yourself in the face. It's uh, a sort of considered movement. And then um, I think I, I did the sort of warrior type lunge before. So I think what I'll do now is just find a springing relationship to touch. That means I can breathe and when I release the breath, I can use that spring to arrive in a forward bend. And then breath by breath, by playing with the weight of my feet, anchoring down through the heels. You can, I can use my hands as well to keep the space going on if I need to. Breath by breath, stack myself up so that giving to the touch of the heels propels the spine forwards. The, 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 the clue is that um, the weight never goes overly on the heels. Um, you touch with the heels and then the moment the weight tends to go there, there's a, there's a natural movement forwards that in the base of the spine that keeps the heels reasonably light. Breath by breath. As I meet space either side of me, you can do that with your legs as well, as well as your wings. As I release the breath into the touch of the heels, I can greet the sun and then bring that space down from above, down through me, bring it, bring it into my heart. And that'll, that'll take me away from the ground as I bring it down. And then when I release the breath, I can compress it into my heart as the heels extend away from me, as I meet the heavens above. That's one round, uh, and that's time. <laughs> so uh, that's plenty. Um, I gave it a lot of spiel, I gave it a lot of attention, but um, it can be as simple as this, you know. <sighs> Let go of the ground. Let go of the ground, use the ground. Um, let go of the ground, find your center so you can let go of the ground. And then <sighs> let go of the ground, meet space, use space to touch the ground. Find your center. It's uh, you know one, two, three. So it doesn't have to take forever. It's just where your attention is as you practice. So I think that'll do. I hope that was interesting. Um, let's see. Is that the one? No, this, this is what I want to transit. So here I am again, close up. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you. I, I enjoyed that. It's nice to just get on with something sometimes. Um, do let me know what you think about my Aquaviva method idea. Um, yes, because it, it can be applied as a kind of massage treatment of sorts. It's like, um, uh, and, and both myself and Abigail do this for people, is uh, that you get gifted the yoga through ex uh, external manipulation. As in, I sort of move a limb, I feed the joint back to where it's meant to be, I connect to your foot, and you know. And um, so, yeah, give me some feedback uh, about what you think about the idea of expanding the, the 
well, the nomenclature, the, uh, the, the name of what I do in Tzidiak Rigu method. And, and so it is as something that can be applied to yoga, but it can also be applied to anything else you want to do. Because, you know, I work with athletes, I work with um, sportsmen, you know, golfers, jockeys, uh, massage therapists, in how they use their own bodies, you know. It's a, it's a body work umbrella uh, system. So, um, anyway. Uh, yes, and I hope that was uh, a, a useful look at Sun Salute for you. I'm, I'm sure there are many other versions out there that are completely different from mine, um, but um, it's all about the intent, I think. Uh, in terms of what I've got coming up, uh, not a great deal. I'm, I'm coming up to London once a month. On the 5th of February, I'm doing some one-to-ones. You can book a slot there. There's a couple of, couple of slots left, I think, uh, at London Bridge. It's a, it's a student's uh, flat and she lets me come and use it once, once a month and um, I think there's a couple of spots left this, when's it, no, uh, next Wednesday, Wednesday the 5th of February is the next one. Uh, you could always work one-to-one -one with me online or come to Hove and, uh, and book in to see me there. Uh, that's the rest of the time but, um, when I'm not busy doing these sort of things or on a retreat or doing a workshop or whatever. Um, otherwise, workshop-wise, I've got... Um, Let's see, I've got to Hart Twickenham coming up at the end of M March, I think. That's the, that's the nearest open workshop, live workshop. Yes. Um, and yes, other than that, I, I'm busy with my online courses, you see. So um, I've got the proprioceptive intelligence course running at the moment. It's uh, live and direct, and it's being recorded as we go. So there are a couple of people that are already um, doing it via the recordings. You still, you still get your three one-to-ones with the course. It's a bit cheaper than taking part in the live sessions, but um, you can book that any time, as you can with the haptic intelligence. Uh, just because it's not going on doesn't mean it's not in my teaching. It's, um, it's an essential part of my methodology, if you like. So, um, yes, yeah, so you can book, on, book those online on, um, on my website, and uh, what else? Oh yes, May, uh, Bank Holiday weekend in May, um, end of May, I think, uh, through to the 1st of June, I'm doing, last weekend of May in fact, um, I am in Cyprus, in the Soul Space place, it's, it's near the south coast, um, and uh, yeah, well, it reminds me, I've got to get my flight today. <laughs> um, yes, do come along. There's uh, Soul Space, you can find them on Facebook. Uh, it's linked to via my website. Um, yes, come along to that and uh, I, will, I will see you in sunny Cyprus. Anything else? I think that's about it. Um, yes, do, do get in touch if you, if you want to work with me in some fashion. We, we are doing, we're still doing the um, training programs, but it's going to be more of a one-to-one -one thing. Um, I, you know, the people that end up uh, working with me long term tend to basically work with me mostly one to one, and uh, it's the best way to go. Really, the the, the the content of my work can be accessed through my online courses now. Um, so, uh, you know, the the actual information, but the the direct experience and how it how it works on a direct somatic level. For, for each individual, that's a that's a process. That, um, you go through a a, a, pro, a change in in the process, and or you go through a process that changes you. So um, that that needs to have one-to-one -one contact. So that that's the way we're going to be doing our training from now on, um, and we we'll work it out about the same sort of price um, as a teach as our full-on 500-hour teacher training program, and at the end of it, you can be um, qualified to work in this way. Um, yes, what else? That's it. Um, yeah, so I hope to see you on something. Um, might see you in Cyprus. Uh, lots of love to you. This is me, Mark J. Aquaviva, the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off until the same time, same place, next week. Lots of love to you all. Bye now.